It's a month after free agency started, and all the talk has been about Ilya Kovalchuk. In case you've been living under a rock located at the bottom of the ocean, here are the headlines from the past month. This just in, Ilya Kovalchuk remains unsigned. Ilya Kovalchuk still undecided on team for next season. Breaking news, there is no news on Ilya Kovalchuk. That is all. Ilya Kovalchuk is being signed by the Los Angeles Kings. Ilya Kovalchuk is not being signed by the Los Angeles Kings. Ilya Kovalchuk is being signed by the Los Angeles Kings. Ilya Kovalchuk is being signed by the New Jersey Devils. Ilya Kovalchuk is not allowed to sign with the New Jersey Devils. Ilya Kovalchuk is an alien. I may have made that last one up. So, as a breath of fresh air, this video will feature absolutely no news about Ilya Kovalchuk. You're welcome. Welcome to the penalty box! So, a month into free agency, let's take a look at where the Leafs are. For a time of year that most people call free agent frenzy, from the Leafs' perspective it's been more of a free agent hibernation. First off, the Leafs make a splash just before a free agency opened by making a five-player deal with Chicago. The Leafs have sent rookie Victor Stahlberg and prospects Philippe Paradis and Christy Domenico to Chicago for prospect Bill Sweat, I think I'm saying that right, and forward Chris Versteeg. Now, I am very happy about this. The Leafs have now landed the top six forward that everyone's been hoping for. Versteeg is 24, scored 44 points last season, 14 points in the playoffs, and can rap. Word. Don't believe me? Google the Stanley Cup celebration in Chicago. Now, some people don't like this trade, claiming that the Leafs gave up a bit too much in return, and I can kind of see where they're coming from. Stauber played on the Leafs last year, has lots of speed, and did show some promise. Philippe Paradis was the player we got in the Yuri Tulusti trade with Carolina, played a couple of games with the Marlies last year, and didn't look too shabby. And Diamenico is a very promising prospect coming out of the Drummondville Voltigeur. He really came onto the scene and turned heads after playing in the World Juniors in 2009, notching 7 points in 6 games and winning the gold medal with Canada. Then, after returning to the QMJHL, broke his leg and got knocked out for 10 months. He came back strong though at the end of the season, notching 22 points in 12 games. Now, this does seem like a lot to give up for Versteeg and Bill Sweat at first blush. And it would have helped if Bill Sweat hadn't refused to sign with Toronto, preferring to walk away and taking his chances with free agency. But let's look again at the players that we gave up. Stahlberg is 24 years old, and in fact he's a few months older than Chris Versteeg. Yes, he showed promise and he's fast. But at 24, he really should be hitting his stride by now. Versteeg is 24 and put up 44 points last season while splitting time between the second and third line. Give him first line minutes and there's no telling what he could do. And Philippe Paradis, he's really of no consequence in my opinion. I don't really know much about this guy, he just made the Marlies at the end of this year. His numbers suggest he's pretty average for an AHL or could possibly make the NHL someday, but maybe not. And Di Domenico. Here's where the outrage gains steam for most. Now yes, 22 points in 12 games, his numbers are impressive. But keep in mind, he's an overager playing in the QMJHL at 21 years old against mostly teenagers. And this is also in a league where scoring is inflated compared to other junior leagues. He hasn't played a single game in the AHL yet. We don't know how he's going to handle the transition to playing adult pro hockey. Sometimes players just can't make the jump. Also, at the time of his drafting, scouts only pegged him as a third liner at best. True, we won't know how he'll do until we see him in the NHL, but it's really not something to go crazy over. In my opinion, the Leafs got a good return. Moving on, the Leafs make their only really big move in free agency, signing Colby Armstrong to a three-year, $9 million contract. And I'm liking this move, too. I remember watching Armstrong in Pittsburgh a couple of years ago, thinking he had one of the hardest hits in the league. He can absolutely crush you and score a few goals. Now his numbers dropped slightly last year, but he seems good for between 30 and 40 points a season. The big question around this signing is, where does he land? Because, ideally, he's a third liner. Because the thing is, with the Leafs being as low on quality skilled forwards as we are, he could end up on the second line. I guess we'll just have to wait and see what training camp holds, but this could get interesting. 
And on to the last signing, the Leafs signed veteran defenseman Brett Lebda to a two-year contract that will pay him $1.45 million per season. Now this signing genuinely puzzles me, because the Leafs are set on defensemen. We've got more than enough defensemen and plenty of prospects that look like they could be ready to make the jump too, with Keith Ollie and Uri Mikas looking very good on the Marlies. So what's with the new guy? My best guess is he's here to replace Finger when we bury his contract in the Marlies, but I just assumed the Baby Leafs would get a few call-ups. Or maybe he's here to replace Caberle if he goes, but there's no movement there either. Interesting turn of events with Leafland. We'll have to keep our eye on this one. And lastly, no news on the Caberle saga. The Leafs have until mid-August to move him, and they've had a few nibbles, but no real offers that Burke likes. He's talking about turning the heat up in August and seeing if anyone's interested in stepping their offer up. You want my opinion? It's looking more and more like we're keeping him. We've had no real offers in the past month, and it could stay that way. With him entering the final year of his contract, Burke could hang on to him and perhaps plan to deal him on deadline day. Or re-sign him if Burke thinks he's worth it. I mean, he's still at 32 and has a few good years left in him. Then again, it could be that everyone's waiting for the Kovalchuk fiasco to die before they make their move. We'll just have to stay tuned and see how it plays out. Anyway, that's it for now, guys. Not that much to talk about, really. Hopefully, we'll see some more movement in the next month or so. Keep on watching, follow me on Twitter, my name's Heffy Wiggle, and you're now leaving the penalty box. Go Leafs go!